Razer is throwing their hat into the ring of premium ultra low profile keyboards with their latest release of the Deathstalker V2 Pro TKL, which seems to take aim at Logitech's G915 TKL board. It does come in at a premium pricing though, so in today's video, we'll see if it's actually worth it. Besides getting the keyboard itself in the box, you also get a dongle adapter if you want to route your dongle to a more convenient spot and a braided USB-C to USB-A cable. Despite the very thin frame that the Deathstalker does have, it's actually a very sturdy board. Back by that aluminum alloy top plate with the bottom plastic housing, creating for an impressively strong board that doesn't budge even when putting quite a lot of pressure on it. The TKL layout of the Deathstalker also gives you your whole F row on the top there, some of your shortcuts, arrow keys on that right hand side, along with the nice handy media controls with the metal volume roller and that more unique looking button that can pause, play, or also skip tracks. On the bottom of the board, you get six rubber feet with two flip out legs at the top, which allow you two different levels of incline adjustment and something that I've also found myself just using a lot with the board as it naturally sits at a very flat angle, although that flat angle is actually supposed to be very good for your wrist and your shoulders as it keeps you in a more ergonomically correct position. On the back of the board, you do get some different controls with that far left switch being your connectivity selection, which you get two different wireless options there with the first of that being the 2.4 gigahertz wireless connection in use with that included dongle. One cool thing with that dongle is it also has the support for multi-device pairing allowing you to use it with a keyboard and a mouse together if you did want to opt to use it that way. You can also store that dongle while you're not using it in a compartment on the back of the board so you don't have to worry about losing it if you're not currently using it. You can also opt to use it in the Bluetooth 5.0 connection, which is your other wireless option there. And you can select that just by moving that switch all the way over to one side. And that's gonna be instantly discoverable by any devices that can support that Bluetooth keyboard. And the three buttons off to the side of it are just quick access profile buttons, which allow you to go between different devices easily also. If you are gonna be using this for gaming though, I would definitely recommend only using it in conjunction with that dongle with the 2.4 gigahertz wireless connection. It's gonna be the fastest and most consistent. When you do put that switch switch in the middle position, it will turn the keyboard completely off and you can use it plugged in, which you'll have to plug it in in general just to charge it via that USB-C port on the back, which can be used with Razer's included cable that it comes with, but also allows for other USB-C cables to fit in there if you did want to use that. Fortunately though, you're not gonna have to charge it super often. It has a pretty good battery life as long as you're fine restraining with that RGB brightness some. They also have a really cool battery life calculator on their website, which can help give you an idea of how long it would last for your use case specifically. The keycaps are interesting as they are a low profile coded ABS, not a PBT, which is kind of interesting, but using what Razer calls their HyperGuard coating, which is designed to be scratch and fade resistant, which I can't speak, of course, to how the longevity is gonna hold up down the road months from now, but so far they have a really nice grippy texture and that coating definitely works. It's not showing any finger oils, which is nice. And they also do have a good shine through for the RGB for both your primary and your secondary functions. Below those keycaps, you'll find your low profile switches, which you get a choice when ordering the board between either the clicky purple opticals or those red linear ones with red linear switches being the one I have in the board with me today. They have a 1.2 millimeter travel until actuation and require 45 grams of force to actually actuate. But they overall feel very impressive and good for a low profile switch while also having a really nice quiet sound profile aided by the silicone dampeners that they have in the switches. One other great thing about these switches is that they actually have a normal Cherry MX stem allowing you to switch out with other keycaps very easily on the board, much easier though than a lot of other low profile options without having all those compatibility issues. The stabilizers aren't perfect by any means, but still sound and feel pretty solid for a low profile keyboard. The RGB on the board is pretty bright and can be easily adjusted in the software along with different lighting effects, but you can get very specific with those lighting effects in that Chroma Studio if you want to. You can also adjust the idle lighting settings along with remapping any keys that you want to in the software as well. You can find the desktop over $250, putting it definitely at the highest end of pricing when it comes to flagship pre-built boards, but also around on par for what we expect anymore with this keyboard pricing. It does, however, bring a lot to the table in this more unique low-profile 
style design, having a lot of versatility, offering you multiple different forms of wireless connectivity, full programmable keys, fast switches that work great for gaming, along with a nice TKL format and layout, and a very sturdy build overall. So if you're someone who really enjoys just a low profile keyboard in general, and want access to some of those more higher end features that can go from gaming to also just normal day-to-day -day use, I think the Deathstalker can definitely be a great option to consider. But I would also consider the G915 TKL from Logitech, which you can now see in the video on the screen now.